our, our main office. Um, what, I gotta... Our main office is um, located at um, 118th and Pecos in the Human Services Building. We do have two other locations, um, one in Aurora off of 32nd and Chambers, and then we have a new office, small office in Brighton as well. Most of the business services, I mean, all of our business services are, we're all stemmed out of the location at um, 118th and Pecos. So a lot of people are, um, some people are aware, some people are not, we are a no cost service to both the job seeker and the employer. Um, and as a part of a business services team, we have many different avenues for you guys to be able to tap into to find workforce. And um, especially in today's time when it's completely you know, a lot of struggles with businesses and um, trying to find that qualified candidate. We have um, job postings that you can um, post your open positions through. It's a state site. So it's connectingcolorado.com. And that site is, um, once you register with us, you register with all the workforce centers in the state. You also have access to all the candidates that are registered in the state. So those that have filed for unemployment, um, those that um, are looking for work, they may be employed and um, are trying to find their next step, their next job. And we have a very a wide array of candidates of qualified um, anywhere from entry level to advanced degrees that are using our systems. Um, Connecting Colorado is going to be your very first start to register if you haven't already with us. Um, if you have and you need to make sure you can go in and just make sure your information is updated. Um, one of us can always help you with that too as well. Um, right now we are um, doing virtual job fairs. Uh, we have a platform that we use that is great for um, individual job fairs. So we can set you up um, individually on a virtual event where you can write from your desk to talk with people. It's an avatar. It sets up with a little nice cool booth that you can have. You can re receive resumes. You can chat with job seekers. Um, and then we also work with cross-regional workforce centers with large events. We just recently had one that was put on by the veterans just this last week and all the workforce centers come together to try to gather all as many job seekers as we can and as many employers as we can and it was done virtually um, under the same platform. So the one thing nice working with the workforce centers is as we find or see or hear or even coordinate with other workforce centers um, these events that are coming through, we like to let our employers know. So it's an, another way to say hey we have these events if you're interested um, we'd love to have you participate in those. Um, and that way you can have access to not only just the workforce centers and Adams, anything that we do cross regionally, we can share that information with you as well. The screening, we offer pre-screening. So um, you can come to us and let us know what type of positions you have. We can screen candidates for you. We can collect and forward your applications for you so you don't um, overload your inbox. Uh, we are happy to um, talk with job seekers uh, and then forward them on to you as well. We also have assessments and this is great. We work with a couple of um, businesses where they use these assessments to gauge the candidates that they're, that they're coming through their doors. So we have worked with businesses that are looking for maybe industrial math or um, blueprint reading or mathematics or clerical. Um, we have um, an array of assessments at our fingertips that you can use when you find that candidate and you want to see where they are sitting within the spectrum of your skill set that you're looking for. We can look at the assessments we have, see if they match what you are kind of thinking as far as what you'd like to test. We can send you the test. You can take it, see if it works. And if it works, then that can be a regular part of your routine hiring. So you'll be able to call us up and say, hey, I, I would like to assess this customer. We can proctor it within our office. We can send it to them in their home. Um, we can even send it to you and they can test on site um, at your location. Um, and that's been a huge help for some employers to see um, where they're sitting if they want to bring that particular candidate on. Or if you want to decide between two candidates and see what skill sets um, they have. Um, and this can be done internally too. So if you ever need assessments for internal candidates that you want to promote from within, um, that is always another option for you. Labor market information. Um, 
is a tool that we have that we can offer you um, at no cost. I mean, obviously all our services are no cost, but this is especially helpful if you are not finding candidates that are coming in through the doors and they are, you're wondering why, why are they not? Are we paying a competitive wage? Are we above competitive wage? And if we are, what else can we look at to offer our candidates? Uh, sometimes we find candidates that are um, the businesses that have um, corporate offices that are based out of state that don't have, don't understand the cost of living that's up here. Recruiters have used this labor market information to be able to go to the corporate office and say, these are the average wages that, that are paying in Denver and that has helped increase the wages so that they can find a better workforce within their agency. Uh, the labor market is um, helpful in a lot of aspects. So if that's something that you're looking for, we can get you reports on individual positions throughout the Metro Denver area. And um, it's a great tool to have. Uh, Work-based learning is another option for us. And I will probably go, I'm gonna go into that right after this. Um, Work-based learning is a number of options for you. Let me click. Um, Work-based learning is another way to take people in with, through registered apprenticeships, through on-the-job training, through internships, through incumbent worker training, um, even job shadowing um, as a way of a pipeline to get into, um, get your people in, through the doors to hire on. I'm gonna go through a little bit of these so you can kind of get an idea of what they are. Um, registered Apprenticeships is um, a USDOL approved program for um, any business that has a registered apprenticeship. We can help businesses get registered if you have an apprenticeship program within your organization that will um, help you get onto what they call the ETPL, Eligible Trainer Provider List. That is a list of uh, registered apprenticeships that we can work with to offset the costs. To be a registered apprenticeship, there's like five components to it. The business has to be involved, so you can choose the skill sets that are needed for the apprenticeship. It has to have on-the-job learning, hands-on learning um, within the apprenticeship program. It also has to have an approved curriculum, and that's where we help you get that curriculum approved through the state. Uh, there has to be some kind of gain at the end of that, so whether that's a certification, um, a promotion, something of that nature at the end of the apprenticeship program. They um, need a national occupational cred um, credential as well for that. Um, and then uh, those, those components aside, I mean, all of those combined will be able to get you um, into the apprenticeship, registered apprenticeship program. Um, there are over 100,000 apprenticeable occupations in the US and we are happy to work with you on that to see if you are um, interested in doing something along those lines. We also have on-the-job training. Um, this program's great um, if you are um, wanting to bring someone on and they have maybe some of the skill sets that they not, might not quite have that you're looking for. Um, it offsets the cost of training them when they bring them on as a full-time employee. They have to be a permanent employee. So if you find someone that you want to bring on and they're lacking just a couple of skills that you might think that you can train on, on the job, we can pay for that. We can help offset that cost of that training so that person can come on within your organization and learn um, the position itself. We reimburse up to 50% of the hourly wage um, for the training. It is up to $5,000 per employee and we don't have necessarily a cap as far as how many OJTs we can do. The 5,000 will depend on the funding that's available currently at the time. You make all the hiring decisions um, and you determine the training. So you, we can send you people and you can say you interview them. If you like them, great. We can bring them on through the on-the-job training. If you have what we call a reverse referral, if you have someone that you want to bring on, you've interviewed them, and you want to be able to see if you can offset the cost of that, then you can send them to us and we'll be able to say, yes, they can qualify for the program. And there are certain qualifiers and um, we take a look at that and we work really hard to see if we can get them qualified for that particular program. The, um, it, lowers, it lowers your risks of hiring people because we really vet the people that we go through. We work with them, we talk with them. Are you interested in this position? Is this something that you're wanting to do long-term? So we really, really wanna make it a successful program. And really it's a win-win situation. You've got 
funding that is offsetting and you get um, you get to be able to train a new candidate for those for that particular position. Internships. We have adult internships. Um, one of the programs uh, that we're working with is through our TANF program. Um, we will do um, adult, we'll pay for the wages for someone to come on and do an internship. This is another pipeline of people that you possibly can tap into. Um, and they are, it's a structured learning that um, is for a period of time, typically three months or so. Um, there's no risk to the employer. We pay the way workers comp, we pay the wages. Um, there's no commitment to hire them at the end. Um, if you like them and you think that they're a good fit for your organization, of course, that would be the ideal situation, but there's no, you don't have to. Um, and there's no, um, there's no risk as far as that goes. And at any point in, during the internship, if they don't work out, you can talk with us and we can, um, you, don't, you don't have to keep them on. The, um, it's really, one thing I like about internships is it's kind of an extended interview process. You can work with them, you can talk with them, you can see if they work out, um, and you just never know through that work experience or the internship that you're gonna be able to find the right candidate. We send you some candidates too through this program. And just like the OJT, it's all in your hands. You don't, if you don't think they're gonna be a good fit, then we, we won't work, we don't have to work with them. We can find you somebody different. Um, the training plan can be developed by you. You can say, this is exactly what I wanna train on. And we will try, we will match the people to see if they need those skill sets. And this is what you're willing to train on. Then we can work with that. Um, and get the paperwork going, and then you'll be able to um, work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And this is mostly adults um, for the internships itself. We also offer work experiences for youth. A lot of times we find youth that um, need some work experience. And just like adults, it's a um, structured learning experience. Um, you can identify the skill sets that you wanna train. Um, one thing nice about this is it helps youth really delve into what kind of career the path they wanna go. And if they identify an interest in an industry, we'll certainly reach out to an employer and say, hey, would you be willing to do a, a work experience for a youth? Um, you're there is to teach them um, it, you know, the good behaviors and really help them navigate the work experience, um, navigate being around the business. What is it like to get up every day and get to work and, and learn the skill sets that they need to grow into an industry or a career? Um, it really supports stabilization um, in the family that's in crisis. So if there's some youth, we have some out of, out of school youth that are working and um, they need to support their family. And so this is one way where we can pay the wages, we can pay the um, workers comp, we can pay for everything if an um, employer will take them on as a work experience. Um, there's also job shadowing. We can do pre-apprenticeship programs for them. So if there's any um, industries that they're interested in, we can offset the cost of them coming on and, and doing some apprenticeship um, pre-apprenticeship programs, some job shadowing, just to kind of help them guide where they want to be long term. Um, another thing that we have is incumbent worker training. This is designed for people in within your organization. So if you're looking and, and with the struggles of workforce right now and finding people, um, it might be a good idea to look at incumbent worker training where uh, if you have a few employees that are looking to promote up or maybe lacking some skill sets or a certification um, and you're willing to um, do some kind of incumbent worker training, we can either play for classroom portion on the job training if it results in a new position for a worker. Um, the worker must be employed with, the, uh, with you itself, the company, and um, it must show potential to be promoted, but it just lacks the specific skills that they're needing to get promoted. And this is a great way to create that pipeline of people. So if you can promote from within of um, an employee, 
in, within your organization, that might open up another avenue for um, a new person to come in. And then maybe we could look at doing an on-the-job training if you were to promote from within and then follow up with that on-the-job training with somebody else that's new to offset the costs of um, creating that pipeline. And it also helps develop succession planning um, for people who work really, really hard and want to work in um, keeping with the organization. And it also really builds value to an, a company if an employer sees that they're willing to train that their candidate and promote from within, then that really vets value to the company and the organization. And then you'll be able to um, gain more people because then it, it, the word of mouth, people hear that, oh, this organization commits to promoting from within or investing in, in their employees. So that is one way that um, we can do that. And we can offset that by paying for those wages um, for the, I mean, it's not, not for the wages, but for the training itself. Um, some of the things that we have available right now um, for grants, um, there are several different grants that we have available um, to um, employers. One of them is our co-respond. It's a disaster grant that we have that we recently received and it goes to the end of August. Um, the co-respond grant is really looking at, um, it's a COVID-19 grant. So we could pay for wages that are for high touch services. So if you are looking to hire people and you want them to um, clean high touch to um, alleviate COVID within your organization, um, and that's a position that was brought on because of COVID, then we can absolutely look into trying to pay for that position. Um, if they're testing, if you have people being tested, organization, you're getting testing for COVID within your, um, within your business, then we can also pay for that. Um, one of the things that it just started out now is that we can actually pay for work experiences through CoRespond. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be related to COVID. So if you have, if you need like an admin assistant to kind of offset the increase in traffic, um, the candidates need to follow the COVID. They have to be affected by COVID. They have to be um, either loss of hours, long-term unemployed. So there's some factors that we can, we have to look at for the candidate side of it, but they have really opened up this grant to allow us to really look at on the job training, work experience, and those will be paid by for the, the candidates itself. Um, if you have high touch COVID positions, we can pay for those too as well. So there's some variable factors with this grant um, and the OJTs will actually still fall under the 50% wages. The work experiences will still fall under full paid wages. The other thing that we have right now is what we call the RUN grant. It's the Reskill, Upskill, and Next Skill grant. This particular grant is for credential and training. So if you have um, candidates that are, um, if, the, if we have job seekers that are unemployed or underemployed and wanna change industries, we can look at paying for credentialing for those candidates. Um, we have, um, upskilling, if you have incumbent workers that are, are looking for um, new skill sets, uh, we can pay for upskilling for that within this grant. And then next skilling we also have is for um, ready skills necessary for employment. So if they are um, looking for classes, certifications, they wanna change careers um, and they're in one avenue, they wanna to move to a different avenue, um, that grant is available as well. We also have um, the formula dollars. This is really for our OJTs, our work experiences. Um, there's a lot of different ways that we can work with you guys um, as far as training, upskilling, retraining, on the job. On the job training is big, um, work experience is big. Um, we can do all of that. Uh, we have a internship with our TANF, like I said, our TANF program that uh, we would love to work with employers on, especially entry-level positions that um, want to bring someone on. We can see if we can find some of our candidates, our, our customers through our TANF program that we'll be able to bring on and gain those valuable skills that they might not have or have been out of the workforce for a long time. 
um, Tech P position. Tech P is another grant that we got. We partnered up with Denver on this. Tech P is going to be more of your um, certification incumbent workers. A lot of these have to be to, um, work with H1B employers, H1B positions that are within the organization. But that will be something that if you have some of those incumbent workers that are wanting some upskilling again, then um, we can work with that as well. There seems to be a theme. There's a lot of upskilling, a lot of next skilling, a lot of um, certifications that we can work with. There's a lot of on the job training, a lot of work experiences, and it really depends on what you need within your organization. We can sit down and talk with you about what are your needs? What, where can we partner up with? What can we do to um, make your world a little bit easier as far as workforce goes? Um, we have to really be innovative especially in today's time with um, the lack of um, workers applying for positions. So we have really take this by the horn and said, okay, what can we do? Who can we partner with? Who can we um, bring to the table to be able to say, what can we find and what can we do to help you? Um, let me, the other thing that when we talk about innovation, this has been going on for probably a couple of years now is sector partnerships. Sector partnerships, they have multiple sector partnerships throughout workforce centers and they are all connected. So we have Denver County, Arapahoe, Broomfield, Chef Co. All of us are all at the table with um, our partnering agencies, whether they be economic development, education, um, nonprofits, anything that is um, able to be there to support businesses. And sector partnerships are business run, they're industry run. So we have healthcare, construction, manufacturing, IT, aerospace, and retail. These, um, the idea behind sector partnerships is that the employers, the businesses come to the table and they decide what their pain points are. A lot of them are gonna be workforce. That's typically seems to be a theme. They have done um, supply chains. We've heard about networking. There's some sector partnerships, like I know um, there's a freight sector partnership that was um, brought on by CDOT. They came up with um, Colorado Delivers. There's a whole marketing um, plan that is um, geared up towards um, finding truck drivers. Healthcare has worked with major health um, uh, I think there's SCL Health and a few others that are at the table where they have come up with apprenticeships and cohorts that they can work on to be able to build that pipeline. Healthcare is where it really started. They've been around for five or six years. They have um, a great model. Um, and then construction, manufacturing, all of them are following suit. How can we get the word out? What can we do to talk about our industries? What can we, what can we as employers do and what can we do? Um, what pain points can we find to be able to make that industry stronger? The, um, the industry, their industry led solutions is really what it boils down to. And everything that nonprofits, all the partnering agencies are kind of in the back end. They sit and they go, okay, what can we do to support? So the businesses come to us in the sector partnership and say, okay, this is what we need. And then we, as um, the supporting group, We'll try to help them navigate, pull together what they can do. And it really has become a successful model for businesses to really come together and kind of figure out what, um, what they can do. How, what can we come up with? What solutions? Um, I've heard everything from uh, tours through different companies. Let's, let's, I've heard bus tours and they've talked about um, local job fairs. They've talked about um, being a part of different, um, what can we do to educate our customer or youth on the pipeline moving forward. So they've come up with a lot of really innovative ideas that has helped them. And if you are ever interested in being involved in anything, sector partnerships is a really good way to go because not only do you become part of the solution or an uh, industry-led solution. You also can network with other businesses and find out what works and what doesn't work and really come together as a collective whole. So that is one thing that um, we talk about um, as far as 
trying to um, meet the employer where their needs are and be able to say, okay, this is what we're gonna work on and let, we're here to help. What can we do? Let's see. All in all, the workforce centers, we're all here. We're, we're um, here to help you. We're here to come up with ideas and solutions and be able to, um, if you have an idea, come to us and say, hey, Rebecca, I, I have this idea. Do you think this would work? Is there something that we can do to put this through? Um, we have uh, done a lot of things remotely and who knows where the next few months are gonna be. But um, with that remote, we've learned to navigate it and learn to try to get people at the table and try to figure out um, what's the best route for, for them as the business. But I might've talked too fast, I apologize. I am open for questions. Um, anything that you have, feel free to, uh, please, I'll be happy to answer anything. This has been great information, Rebecca. Um, I did see on our chat, we did have one of our attendees ask about um, some labor market information. Would they just email the address that's on the screen right now or yep. how do they access that? I put my address up there. You are welcome to email me. Um, the business services has a main employer in line that you can call and it, it gets checked by all of us. So if one's out, then the other person can check it. Um, and the... Um, ACB USSVC is also another generic, I mean, it's our main business services email, but yeah, let me know what industry you're looking for, um, what positions that you want, um, and it can be as many as you like, can be very specific. The more specific, the easier it is for us to find the data, but um, we have a great data analyst on staff too, so he can probably delve into more than just the overview of the positions. So if you're looking for data, absolutely let me know because I can, I can get it to you. That's great. And then um, something I thought of with the grants that you mentioned, I think those could be a great resource to a lot of companies. Is there a deadline to apply for those? Again, do they just um, contact your, the, the emails displayed or kind of how do you go about pursuing one of those grants? The co-respond, the disaster grant is going to end August 31st. Okay. Um, and I probably should have put that up there. Uh, there's um, several counties that are working with that disaster grant. So um, we can always work with other regions to, to get stuff funded. Um, the others, the Tech P and the Run, I think it's like a two year, two and a half year grant. So we just started those. So those are um, relatively new. So we have plenty, plenty of time for those. And then of course, on the job training work experience, all of that's gonna be consistently the same. And we have a lot of pot of money that comes in through the workforce centers. So we can look at one grant or one pot of funding and it, we may be able to pay through that, but we may be able to pay through some other funding. So, and it really depends on what the job seeker qualifies for really, and um, where we can pull that money from to pay for it. So we tend to get real creative as far as what we can do and how we can pay for participants. That's great. Um, so if anyone in the audience has any questions, feel free to um, either drop those in the chat, raise your hand, and then we'll go ahead and um, give you the speaking capabilities or drop them in the Q&A. Um, this is a great time um, to, to ask, you know, Rebecca, any questions that you might have about the services that they're offering. Give folks kind of a couple minutes to think of some things. I know um, I was on one of those um, industry roundtables I think you had for the construction group. Mm -hmm. And I think what I observed, you know, is it's just a great resource when different companies from the same industry can kind of come together, brainstorm ideas. It's really um, a way to bring out those out of the box, think, out of the box thinking, which is kind of what we need, um, you know, creative solutions to, to these problems that we're facing in, in today's um, day and age. So if you haven't had a chance to join one of those, I, I would encourage that. And we are gonna do, we have a transportation and, and I apologize, I don't have the information right in front of me. We will have a transportation and I can send it to you if you wanna share it with everyone, a round table coming up in February. And then we're gonna be working on several round tables over the next couple of months as industry wide to kind of get an idea of where everyone's sitting with as far as employer side goes. 
That's great. Yes, we do have everyone's contact information. So anything um, that you can send us that way, I'd be happy to get it emailed to everyone so they have that. Yeah, and if you guys are ever looking for, if you're doing on-site open houses, um, if you're participating on, in different job fairs, um, anything that you want me to share with our job seekers, I am all about sharing information. So if you have an event or you are going to be a part of an event and you want um, to get a little bit of word out saying, hey, I'm gonna, this employer is going to be at this event on this date between these times, we have the capability of emailing all our job seekers. And that include, I mean, we can do them um, by industry. We can do them by uh, several ways that we can get the word out to our candidates. So it's, it's not just the job posting and it's not just the um, labor market. I mean, we really want to be able to get the, the information to our job seekers. So if there's flyers that you have, if you want to send me information on your company and what you're hiring for, I can send out email blasts to them and say, hey, this is um, a great opportunity for you. Let me know. Use me as a resource. Use me as somebody that is an extended arm for you to to recruit workforce or on-site events or events that you're at. Um, we love to share that information with everyone. Of course. And so Rebecca, Adams County's population is growing pretty rapidly. I'm sure you're aware of that. Is there a workforce labor study through your group available that tracks the different types of skills of our new workforce has available to local employers? We can pull that information. So we can pull wages uh, and industry numbers. There are some data that I can, I'm absolutely happy to share with, but it is growing and we have a vast number. Adams County is real diverse as far as um, in industries and um, candidates. So yeah, we can absolutely get that information to you. Great, thank you. And um, it also looks like um, someone's asking about more information on the job fairs and kind of anything coming up on that. Um, how would people get that? Um, you can just email me um, or if, yeah, if you send me your email, then I can put you in my database and, and then I can share the information as we have job fairs come through. If you're looking to do individual job fairs, just let me know you'd like to do a virtual individual event. Um, and then that way I can get you set up with that platform and then it won't cost you anything to do even an hour or two hour virtual event that you can do from your desk. Sounds so, yeah, great. We can absolutely get you set up. And we get a lot of them and they just, they ebb and flow. So we had a few of them over the holidays. Um, we had one, like I said, just this last week, that was a multi-industry one. We've even partnered with Wyoming and Colorado as a partner for Northern Colorado. Um, and it actually kind of morphed into more of like Denver. So we had a lot of Denver employers because it, it is virtual and anyone can apply. So yeah, we absolutely can get you set up or um, get the information out to you at any time when we have upcoming events. Perfect. And just to make sure we didn't miss anything, um, there was another comment about the grants. Do folks apply for those um, on the website or through emailing you? Um, they can email me. Email we you. Can the information, yeah, absolutely. Whatever, depending on what grant they're interested in, we absolutely can um, talk with them about it. And I'm happy to meet with anyone, like I said, to talk about what their needs are and what, um, grants that might be available or um, the needs that they have. What a great resource. Um, so then do you um, also have statistics of available employees who get jobs through your office? Um, not necessarily, I would have to look and see. I mean, I don't wanna say yes or no. Um, I know that we do get people that get hired through us and a lot of um, the people that get hired are through the programs. Uh, the statistics, as far as anyone applying online, it's a little bit harder to, to capture um, through the system, but we do have a great success in on-the-job training or work experiences or internships where they end up in um, 
a successful employment, long-term employment. Um, we've even paid for training for job seekers and then assist them in finding jobs afterwards. So if they've, we've had job seekers come in and say that they have, they're interested in a certification and that's what they're lacking to find work. So we have paid for their training within that industry and then found them employment afterwards. We actually have um, a job, develop, job developer on staff and he works with job seekers that come through the system and um, he will reach out to employers specifically regarding those candidates as well. So if we know the more employers we know and the positions that they are, when we have our job developer that works with those candidates, then we can connect the employer with the job seeker and kind of help facilitate that interview. And if there's any questions that the employer has, then we can help out with that too as well. Great. So I'm um, just checking to see if there's any other questions before we conclude today's event. Not seeing anything else. So um, this event has been recorded. So that way you'll have it as a resource um, to look back to, um, you know, as you're um, considering different strategies for, you know, getting um, your workforce or your business adequately staffed. And we just, you know, think that Rebecca and your team are, you guys are rock stars, um, you know, doing everything you can out there. And we know it's a tough time. Um, you know, people are just in search of employees for their business. And I know that um, the work that you guys are doing is, is just, wonderful and there's so many resources that you've shared with us um, again thank you so much for being here today and um, thank you to everyone for um, some great questions and and again you know we're all here to to support um, your businesses thank you for having me and we really appreciate it we love the partnership with good Commerce city you guys are amazing too thank you And thank you to the Chamber of Commerce as well for, for partnering on us um, for this event. And with that, we'll go ahead and conclude and we hope everyone has a wonderful day.